Steve, Amanda, this is only a brief de-escalation of the sartorial arms race because it's an emergency and I have some things to talk about and a dictator just died and I have to talk about him before it stops to be relevant. So every time Libby is in the news I want to make this video and then it stops being in the news for a couple weeks and then it's in the news again and then it stops being in the news and I want to make a video but then I can't and then uh, Muammar al-Qaddafi dies and now I have to. There are an endless stream of jokes and allusions, on, especially on Twitter, to the multitudinous transliterations of Muammar al-Qaddafi's name. You know, the guy who until very recently was supposed to be in charge of Libya. Like, is it Gaddafi? Is it Gaddafi? Is it Gaddafi? Is it Gaddafi? Even Leo McGarry on the West Wing has opinions about how to spell his name, but frankly, Leo is wrong. I love you dearly, sir, but, uh, it's incorrect. The trouble with Qaddafi's name is it already exists in multiple forms in Arabic. You've got the classical Arabic form, Muammar al-Qaddafi. His last name in, in standard Arabic contains the voiceless uvular plosive, which sounds like this, <coughs> as well as the voice dental fricative, which sounds like this. The, the, uh, so at the end, you get Muammar al-Qaddafi. Now, Qaf is already really difficult to say for Americans, I'll get to that later. But, in Libyan Arabic, Muammar al-Qaddafi gets turned into something else. The sound Qaf, which looks like this in Arabic and like this in phonetics, is turned in Libyan Arabic into the Gaf, the voiced velar plosive. G -g -g and the voiceless dental fricative, Dhal, which looks like this in phonetics, turns into the voiced alveolar plosive. D -d 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 so already, in the transition from Standard Arabic to Libyan Arabic, we're going from al-Qaddafi to al-Gaddafi. And this is just within Arabic. Now, move it from the Arabic alphabet, which does have a pretty good one-to-one -one correspondence between sounds and letters, and put it into English, and we've got a whole new can of worms. In English, we have some people insisting on transcribing the first letter as Q, uh, because it's Qaf, and we have other people insisting on transcribing it as G, because in Libyan Arabic it's Gaf, and then we have crazy people who turn everything into a voiceless velar plosive, because, because that's the closest thing English has to K. But it's kind of misleading, and you might as well just either stick to Q and pronounce it as K, um, or just put a G there. And then there's the fact that the V is doubled. That it's not just Qaddafi, but it's Qaddafi. So, you want, do you want to put one D, or two Ds, or a DDH, which is what my former employer used to do? This diagram right here is a very small sampling of the different permutations of the transliteration of Qaddafi's name that we can have in English, and it's nobody's fault! Except for Leo McGarry, who wants to spell it with a KH, and that means that it's a voiceless velar fricative. <laughs> and that sound, even though it exists a lot in Arabic, is nowhere near Qaddafi's name. Which is why, fortunately for journalists, phoneticians, linguists, and the people of Libya, Muammar al-Qaddafi is no more.